what I was trying to get to was while you've uh, had a career that spanned eight American presidents, a, a remarkable achievement, by the way, um, has there ever been a subject matter during that time that felt too taboo for humor? Um, yeah, I mean, if the big news involves a crime, you know, I, I'm not going to touch it. Um, uh, but, uh, you know, for the most part, the stories, um, I, I mentioned earlier that, you know, the, my marching orders from the Record Journal was your subject matter has to be something that we've covered, that one of our reporters has written about. So, you know, that's, I choose from what's in the daily newspapers. And, you know, a lot of that is, is like criminal stuff. Um, so I, I tend to avoid anything to do with that. So there's, there's always a, a mixture in the topical of, of things that might be a little too risky and things Yeah, that... I mean, controversy is fine. Controversy is great. I mean, when, when, when people, you know, especially public figures, are in some sort of disagreement. It's, you know, it's right for commentary, Oh, it's, right? and it makes it easier. Yeah. But um, when you, when, I guess the way I would, I would phrase this is, I personally believe, and I, I guess I was coming to ask you whether you feel <clears> the same, that if you are careful and considerate and clever, that no subject in our culture is really out of bounds for comedy, but it's, it's your approach towards your comedic take that really makes all the difference in the world. And I think that's what I was getting to before when we were talking about tone, where the tone, if the tone is, is lighter and the idea is to have a universal cartoon where people can find a perspective and find a way in, earlier you said that being mean doesn't play. You know, being, being mean for the sake of being mean doesn't, doesn't work when, when you're trying to create a single panel cartoon that is a successful one that has an avenue for everyone to find their own message inside mm -hmm. of it. So do, do you feel that comedy requires careful and clever consideration in order to be effective in, in, the, in the world in which you work? Or is that just me putting nah, on it's, Well, it's certainly worth testing it. Maybe, I mean, sometimes I'll show it to my wife and, and, you know, am I off base here or something, you know? Is she, is she your main yeah, reference? Is she your main reference? Well, Sounding sure. board? I mean, my life partner, and, you know, she... Um, she didn't uh, say, I love you, but I, to leave the comedy at the... To leave the cartoons at the no, door. No, but she's actually... She gave me a great idea once. We were driving back from Maryland, where her parents live, mm -hmm. and um, I, uh, bullets were showing up in people's yards from near a shooting range, I oh, guess. Wow. Mysteriously, bullets, you know, all of a sudden, you know, you're walking out to get the garbage, and you're not being hit by it, but they were in people's yards. And um, we we're just driving home, and I was talking to her about it. And she, I thought it was ended up being one of my favorite cartoons. It was um, have people out in the woods with a field guide to bullets. You know, help we have for birds or insects or mushrooms yeah. or something. Um, so I elaborated elaborated on that, and it, uh, I think it was very successful. And I owe that idea to her. But she is a great sounding board, and um, you know, there have been times when maybe I, uh, without her intervention, I, I would have done something. I'm, probably wouldn't have been happy with later because it you know, maybe was over the top. So it's important to have at least one or, or two people in your life where you have that kind of trust where you can, you can say, here's something I'm working on. Don't, you know, steer yes. me the wrong direction. Am I, am I headed towards the right? And the editors will do that as okay. well, the editorial board. And they have, you know, spiked one or two uh, completely. Um, one or two over 40 years isn't too bad, just right? Just totally not run them, but they have uh, revised them. They've, they've made um, changes in the, in the, in the wording. Uh, they've actually, at one point, um, trimmed off the top, you know, 20% of a cartoon. Just, oh, wow. <laughs> just, and um, they, they check with you before they that. run those, right? They, they don't usually just, do, yeah. Okay. They'll say, you know, here's the option. Either we don't run it or we make this revision, be okay with it, and... You know, I'm not thrilled, but I, I think in one of those cases, I think they improved it. I think oh. that, you know, I, I said, you know what, they were right, and, and it's better now. Uh, and for the most part, I'd probably say, nah, it's not as good, but it's all right. You know, well, The collaborative process always takes something away from the individual spirit, but if you're doing something just by yourself, you're really losing that hive mind Yes, right. I mean, where... it's not a team project. It's a, it's a, it's a one-person project, but fortunately there are team members that get involved before it sees print. But so, I mean, it's, it's not like I give them a lot of reason to, to scrutinize it. I mean, I don't sneak subliminal messages in yeah. there. I don't, um, I don't intentionally do anything offensive. So, and they know that. I mean, maybe when I was this, you know, long-haired kid from a from a liberal college, when I walked in their door for the first time, they might have been a little out. They were a little bit more. Yes, I think they were. Um, but you know, they, a couple decades of quality yeah, work, and you calm them down, though, right? right? They, they, <laughs> 
turned the bright lights off me and said, yeah, he's, he's all right. So as you, as you bring this um, phase of your cartoonist career to a close, because you're, you're finishing and you're retiring from your, your day job where you've been for over 30 years and you're going to get to dedicate yourself to cartooning full time, maybe returning to some, some long form work or working with other uh, collaborative partners. Are there any lessons you've learned about the craft of commenting on the time you're in that you think would benefit young artists who are just beginning careers in editorial cartoons? Because that's really what the skill is that you've you know, developed over the last 40 years. It's, it's beyond cartooning. You have developed a skill for commenting on the times you live in. And I feel like that is almost as important as the actual artistic expression itself. Yeah, I mean, I would tell him, um, make sure you have something to say. Mm. Um, and if you don't, you know, in my case, when I don't really have a, a, an opinion, um, you know, try to try to be amusing about some aspect of the news that you just, you know, having a gentle um, a bit of fun with. But uh, if you do have something to say, um, you know, I talked earlier about the multiple thumbnail sketches and, and you know, I'll make revisions and, you know, if it's not right, don't let it run. Change it. T go to a whole different subject matter or um, you know, make sure it's right. You know, sleep on it. Um, revise it in the morning. But when you um, turn it over to whoever is publishing it, if it is commentary now, um, you've lost control of it and mm. you just want to make sure that it's 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 ready to reflect yeah. positively on you know on you as a as a common commentator or commenter or um so anyway and and also um, if it's no good reject it but maybe parts of it were good and you know save save a little aspect of it and use it in a new work um it's not going to pass muster with myself, but a little part of it, you know, was either looked really good, it was funny, or was a strong element of a different cartoon in the future. And I think songwriters do that with. Uh, oh, writers too. Writers too. It's it's a great piece of advice. You're saying don't settle, and you can you can um, take elements of something of your own work that you're right. rejecting. Well, part of it you might you might hang on to and reuse somewhere so, else. So for me, in my world as a, as a writer, we call that the the orphan folder. Oh, really? So okay. you, you collect your orphans. You know orphans. what? I have, I have a folder of little drawings, doodles that I think I can, that have promise. Yeah. I haven't added to that in 10, 15 years. So, <laughs> but I'm going to find that folder, and now with the with, with the time all this that time, get, that's the folder you really yeah. want to find, because that's the folder that has all those unfinished, half, half right, brain, perfect partial yeah. that are just waiting to have that next. Yep. step added to them need to put in the right context and, and in my world it's called the, the orphan folder and it's the whole idea of killing your darlings in writing you have to kill your darlings and you have to be ready to kill your your favorite line in order for the story to be the best story it can be but the people who were killing their darlings and not saving them they were fools yeah. because all those little orphans can grow up and have and raise their own families so it's it's really important advice and something that i try to remind myself all the time no matter if something comes to its complete fruition it can and it will if you come back to it at another time. So don't, you can kill your darlings, but, but save them somewhere and try to resuscitate them when In you have time. In a different time and place, it, it'll thrive. Yep. It's fantastic. 